Welcome to our latest episode, Democracy or Regulation, The Illusion of Freedom. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how overregulation in democracy only gives people the illusion of freedom. It stifles business, puts wealth at risk, and what you can do about it. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. To me, freedom, both personal and financial, are of the utmost importance, as it is to most of my friends and clients. Most people believe that because they live in a democracy, they are free. This absolutely is not true. Freedom and democracy are not the same thing. They are very, very different. All that democracy means is that you theoretically have a say in what kind of policies and laws a government implements. For example, you can vote on the public sector matters. But more and more, it seems like the governments and democracies do what they want regardless of what the public thinks or votes. In many cases, public polling shows that even when a majority of voters are for or against something, the government does something different. How is it possible, for example, that in the US, well over 50% of the population is in favor of abortion, but there's no federal law protecting it? Freedom, on the other hand, means that you can conduct your personal and financial affairs as you see fit, that you have the right to determine the way you interact with others in the private sector. If you have a democracy with a huge government, lots of regulations, you have less freedom than you do in a non-democratic country with a small government, less regulation. You also have different kinds of freedom. For example, there's personal freedoms like free speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, and the like. But there's also financial freedom, like free markets, the right to own, buy, and sell property, and handle your financial affairs free of government involvement, or at least with minimal government involvement. The more government regulation of businesses and their involvement in the economy, the less financial freedom you have. If anything, democracy in its current state is eroding freedoms, both personal and financial. That used to not be the case. So what changed? The short answer is more laws, regulations, and rules. Democracy itself, unfortunately, is its own worst enemy. Think about how representative democracies work. You elect representatives to vote on policies and laws for you. Anytime you give up a power to somebody else, they will use it to serve their own ends, not yours. Representatives, politicians, are elected by the voters. And the easiest way to get elected is to bribe the majority of voters with promises of more free government benefits and less taxes. We'll lower taxes for low and middle income taxpayers. We'll cancel student debt. We'll give you free government health care. And the rich and businesses will pay for it. As they are a minority, their votes matter little, right? Sound familiar? Everything a politician campaigns on to implement requires more laws, regulations, and rules. And with each new law, regulation, or rule, a freedom is either restricted or an obligation imposed. We keep voting for politicians who want to make more laws, regulations, and rules, thereby reducing our own freedoms. If democracies want to be the beacons of freedom that they used to be, then voters need to start voting for politicians who want to do less, who want to pass intelligent laws, combine laws, and do away with unneeded ones. Trump was on the right track with his policy that for every new regulation, he had to get rid of two old ones. Democracies need to restore freedoms. Unfortunately, voters are just too stupid. In fact, I wrote an article for the Wall Street Journal entitled America Has Too Many Rules. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. You can check it out. Most people I know, for example, feel more free in Dubai than in Europe or in the U.S. I feel the same. Democracies may offer more personal freedoms than non-democracies, but the gap is closing fast. I would also argue that today you have more financial freedom outside of democracies. Just look at the wealth and businesses that have flowed to places like Dubai, Singapore, and Hong Kong. For many people, accepting a little less personal freedom is well worth the trade-off for having much more financial freedom. 
Democracies are driving out the wealthy and businesses in droves due to oppressive taxation and overregulation. It won't end well for them. The point I'm trying to make is don't believe the media that freedom and democracy are synonymous. They're not. Many non-democratic countries now offer far more financial freedom than democracies do. To me, overregulation is one of the biggest risks facing wealth preservation today. Governments and democracies have gotten too big. They spend too much and they provide too many free government benefits. To protect your wealth, you have to look to where it is welcome and safe. I always preach personal and wealth mobility. That means physically relocating to a country that offers the types of freedoms that are important to you, as well as that offer tax advantage living. It also means getting your wealth out of overregulated, overtaxed countries. Unfortunately, many people wait until it's too late. So often you see people, for example, that wait until they get sued to put an asset protection plan in place. At that point, it's too late. You need to set it up before you even think you might get sued. The same goes for wealth preservation. If you wait until it's either too expensive or outright impossible to leave a high tax, overregulated country, it's too late. You need to do it while you still can. So just to recap, we've explained that democracy is not the same thing as freedom, how democracies are becoming less free and pose a significant risk to wealth and what you can do about it. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.